Hello, I'm River, and welcome to my Monster Hunter World board game paint series. Today, I'll be working on the Toby Kadachi. Before you start on this model, you want to scrape off any mold lines with a hobby knife. And I primed this guy uniform gray. I opt for the gray because we're going to be dealing with lighter colors, and it'll just be easier to paint. Be sure to attach your model to something sturdy, so that way you'll be able to handle it a little better. I start off with some fair skin. Any light khaki will work. Go ahead and use this on all of the underside scales on the creature. Go all the way up to its bottom jaw, its underbelly, and the bottom side of its tail. You also want to be painting the underside of the limbs with this, as well as the bottom half of the feet, where its little paw pads are. It's a little tricky painting underneath of the model, so just be careful. Any mistakes we can clean up later. I take ethereal blue, and I begin to paint the entire top half of the model with this. My general rule of thumb in any painting scenario is minimum two thin coats, and make sure your paint is watered down. You don't have to be too careful as we'll be coming back and covering most of this back up again. Be sure to cover up all the gray on the tail because the way the scales are layered, you might end up missing some pretty sizable amounts of blank plastic. With Underdark Indigo, I go ahead and I paint the limbs on the top side. I avoid the spikes in the membrane but I mostly cover the ridges and the scales on the forearm and the digits. Up on the shoulder, there's one ridge that goes down the length of the body towards the tail. I'd be sure to very delicately get that. The front of the nose and the top of the head space around the eyeballs as well. This weird little spiky eyebrow thing. I also get the two bottom fangs with this blue. Follow the ridge all the way down its body. I do the same with the back legs. paint the center ridge of the tail and the two outside ridges, leaving the layer of scales in the center to be that more lighter blue. I also paint the ridges kind of running up from the side of its neck, matte black paint, I go ahead and I paint all of the claws. Dragonfire Red, and just very carefully paint the eyes. Alien Purple. I paint the inside of the mouth as well as the sort of webbed skin on the side of its jaw. Blue tone, gonna water this down two to one, wash to water, and generously cover the entire body with this, focusing majorly on the darker blue, 
And then as my paint sort of runs out on my brush, I very lightly give the lighter scales a bit of that color. You want to be focusing this wash on the forelegs, the back legs. The sides of its head, the top of his head, and the ridge running down it. Everywhere that's blue, we want to blue wash it. dark tone. Just kind of very carefully wash the underbelly of the creature. The ratio used for this is one to one, wash to water. I don't want it to be too empowering, I more so just want it to fill up the cracks and add a bit of depth to the scales. With the dry brush, Go ahead and I dry brush that original blue that we covered the entire model with. I'm very careful to retrace the spots that were light blue in the first place to sort of bring them back up. I mix a tiny bit of a very pale gelatinous blue to make a almost white blue. And I very carefully dry brush the membrane, starting from the outside and being gentler the closer into the body I get. I lightly dry brush the arm spikes as well. Don't forget the membranes within the crook of the arm. With the lightest touch, I gently dry brush a bit of a sheen onto all the ridges. Because of the texture of the scale, it takes very well to a dry brush. Dry brush a very light sheen on each of the claws. The ridges on the head, and all the way down to the tail. I don't want to dry brush it too much as to take away from the existing colors. Red and a bit of the beige that we used originally. We want to just give it a bit of a pink tummy. You can do this as little or as much as you want. And then add a little more of that beige to make it more pink. And I very carefully add a tiny bit of detail to the webbing on the side of the mouth, leaving the color inside the mouth the same purple. Coming back with that blue again, and we're just going to wash over all of the dark blue parts of the body. So the arms, the shoulders, the back legs, and the ridges on the head and the tail. The dry brush that we did to sort of like give that sheen is going to still show through the wash while sort of turning a bit of more blue and blending better. skeleton bone, I'm just going to very carefully color the teeth. 
the teeth are much more towards the center of the mouth. So you might make a mistake here. That's all right. We can just come back and fix that up. Uh, you may even choose to not do this part. I water down that skeleton bone just a slight amount more, and I use it to highlight the upwards facing scales on the bottom jaw. Matte black, we go ahead and we color the entire base. You want to water this down, but not too much, otherwise it's going to pull away from the plastic, as you can see towards the bottom of the model here. It'll take multiple layers, but just be patient, and it'll look all right. I take that dark tone wash, and I just paint the four legs from the elbow down as well as the back legs from the knee down to give it a very slight gradient from the dark blue into an even darker blue towards the feet. I also kind of do the ridges on the sides of its head. I end up not liking it as much. It feels a little too out of place and maybe I should have done more and solidify that area as opposed to just being one patch. I also use a bit of the black wash to give depth to the eye and fill in the pupil slit. I wick away any excess with a damp brush to make sure it's not entirely overwhelming. that, I can see the Toby Kodachi done. There's a lot of different ways you can do this model. Depending on the lighting in the game, it might seem more silvery. Um, this model doesn't really have any of the fur patches that the in-game model has. I think I did the best I could with what I had. As you can see, the creature's way too long for my box, so I just have him out here spinning. If you like it, leave a comment. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.